This is the step-by-step -step instructions for assignment exercise S9, spreadsheet number nine, class scores as part of the performing uh, operations by using formulas and functions for the Microsoft Office Specialist Certification Exam, and also assignment number nine for Management 1400. And so what we have here is make sure you've downloaded the S9 class scores spreadsheet. And when you open it, you'll see what we have here is we have a list of scores. Uh, for our students, um, their exams, they've had three exams, their final and then the final grade here listed out by their student ID number. And then we have a few things that we need um, to do here. So uh, we're going to do a few functions here. We're going to look at how many students we have and we're going to do uh, looking at that two different ways. We're going to look at what the average score is for each exam and the final grade what the maximum, what the minimum how many people didn't complete their final. Now, a lot of what we have to do is data preparation, and data preparation can take between 80 to 90% of your time in data analytics and analyzing data. So just putting together a spreadsheet and then setting it up. So that could take 80 to 90% of your time, and then you go in and you, you analyze the data, and that can be very quick if you set it up right. So one of the things in setting up your data right is naming ranges. And I know we've done very little of that, but we've done a little of it in the last, uh, in a few of the last assignments. So in this case, we are going to name ranges. And we're going to name the student ID range, exam one, exam two, exam three, final exam, and final grade ranges. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. Then we're going to go through it very quickly. I'm going to show you the fastest way to do it. Uh, you can always go to the formulas tab. You can always click define name. And for right now, as an example, we have final grade because I had my cursor on F16. So it brought that up as the name. And it's saying, what do I want to refer to? And I'm going to start in F17 and shift control down. And there's my range. And so final grade, and I'll just go ahead and click OK. And that's using the define name. Now it's okay if you didn't get that and it wasn't fast enough or it was too fast. I'm going to show you a few other ways. Okay. So the way I like is using the name box right here. And then I use name manager if I've made a mistake and I have to go in and look at things. So I can go in and look at here's the final grade. Summer block and name managers is in the formulas tab. So the formulas tab up front. You have the name manager and you have defined name. Uh, and it's okay if I went too fast and you didn't get it because I'm going to show you the way I prefer to do it. And you can do this on your exam. So uh, a lot of times uh, when we do a formula, you need to scroll down and get information, but we want to define the name. So put your cursor in A17. Use the shift control and then the down arrow. And you see that it highlighted that entire area from a17 to A54. And to name your range, you can just go up here in the name box and we're going to name this student ID. And you have to use underscore if you remember that because you can't use a space in naming a range and student ID and hit enter. And we can now go look in the name manager and see that it's there. And we can see that it's F, you know, where it is from A17 if I do the student ID to A54 and I already have final grade. So if I wanted to name these different ranges, I can add a plus button here in Name Manager. I can go to New and then I can come here and I'm going to call this Exam 1 and Exam underscore 1. And it's asking what I want it to refer to. So I can click on here for my Exam 1 and I want it to go from B17, shift control down to B54 and click OK. And then I can ex add my other one. So if you're comfortable doing it that way, okay, you can do it in the name manager. Okay. But for myself, I like doing it this way. So we've named the student ID. We've named exam one. I've named final grade. We'll do that again. I'll just come here to C17. And I'm just going to do shift control down, highlight that column. I'm going to come here to the name box and just name it exam underscore two, enter. And I can do that for exam three, shift control down, go to my name box, 
and that's exam underscore three, enter. I'm going to do that for my final exam. Start in now E17, shift control down. Over here, this is my final exam, final underscore exam. And then for the final grade, I've already done it. And you'll see where it'll come up in the name box. If I hit shift control down, it recognizes that I already named that range. So I have final grade. So I can come back here and look and see that I have six ranges named. And you need to make sure you have that exam one, exam two, exam three, final, final grade and student ID. Okay. And the reason why we're going to name these is we're going to look at the average of these. So we're going to do some counts and averaging. So we've done step one, which is naming ranges. And we're going to show you why to do that. In step number two, we're going to count. Okay, we're going to insert a function. And you're going to get a question like this. It says insert a function that calculates the total number of students in the class from column A. And you're going to know there's a difference uh, between count and sum. Sum is what is the total. Okay, develop or, you know, do the total number of that. But total number of means they want you to count. And we're going to do something else here. We're going to start in, in C5. And we're going to do a count function here, equals count. And I always like clicking on the function. And it's asking us to count what? And in this case, we're going to count exam one. And notice that because I named it, it highlights that range and it's got 38. And I'm showing you this in C5 because I'm going to show you what happens if we use the count function on the data in column A. So if I, if I do equals count here, and this time I'm just going to come down and highlight it. So it'll highlight from A17. Okay. And it's got that here, uh, A17 through A54, and it, it knows that it's my student ID. And I'm going to hit enter, and notice it gives me zero. Okay. Count, the count function is used to count numbers. So we have to use a different because this is text. So if it has a hyphen or if it's got text or something in it right there, we have to use a different count function. And so that count function that you'll need to do on your exam is actually equals count A. And you can use it for both the exams or on the student ID, you know, in column A or column B, because count A basically stands for count anything. So equals count. And I'm going to bring up count A. And what values that I want? I want it to come from my student ID. Okay because I named that range and you see that we have 38. So if it's if you're counting something that isn't numbers, you need to use something like count a instead of the count function because the count function only counts numerics. Okay. So we've completed part step number 2 where we've used the count function and we use the count a function uh, and hopefully now you understand the difference on that and can do that. In step number 3 uh, we're going to, it says, insert a function that will calculate the average of the scores for exam one. So we know it says calculate the average. So we're going to use a simple average function. So equals average. So put your cursor in D8 and equals average. And what are we going to average? We're going to average exam one. And just choose exam one. And we see that the average is 85.1. And here's the reason why. We named ranges. So I want you to practice on exams two, three, final exam, and final grade. So we're going to equal average. And if we had to come here on exam two and start here and drag, you know, hopefully we don't have too many rows or columns to have to go through uh, on there. Or it would be hard to do. And so that's why we named the ranges. And you can see that because I chose that range and dragged it, it recognized it was range two. And now we can just do count, or sorry, average is what we're working on. So average, I can do exam three, enter. I don't even have to add my 
parentheses at the end. Excel will do that for you. And equals average here. And I'm just going to bring up final exam. So there it is. There's my final exam. Enter. And then final grade average equals average. And final grade. Enter. And you see how quick we just did the averages up of those. Now it's going to ask you a question. It's going to say something like in cell number EA, insert a function that will calculate or bring in the highest score. So highest would also be maximum. And guess what? Our function is called max. So equal max in cell E8 and bring up max. And it's asking for the number. And because we named those ranges, we're going to do exam one and enter. So the highest score was a 99. We're going to do that for exams two, three, and the final exam and final grade for practice. So equals max. And I'm going to do this right along with you. And this is exam two. And enter. And then equals max. Number is exam three. Enter equals max. Final exam. Start typing in final. It brings it up. Click on it. Exam. And then equals max. Final grade. Enter. Okay. And so we can see that right here. Okay. And it did something wrong there on final exam. Okay. Because it should have brought back 100. It only brought back 99. So I'm going to go in here to my name manager. I'm going to go to final exam. And notice that it didn't go all the way down to E54. So I'm going to change this. That can happen. Okay. The reason why is we have some data in here that didn't get put in. So I needed to go all the way down to E54. So this was a good thing. So we started E17. And we're going to dollar sign E dollar sign 54. Okay, so that's our range. And we need to make sure. So let me go back here and delete this. So I'll cancel out of that. I'll go back into final exam. I'll look at our range right here and I'll just change this last one to E54. Okay. So that way it's going all the way down. And notice that when we corrected this, that it automatically changed this. And it changed this right here too. Okay because the average wasn't going the whole way. Now it is. And now we can go to minimum. So it's a good mistake to make so you can see what happened. You see that I had no data in this one because I have a student or maybe a couple students who didn't take it. And we're going to show you um, what we're going to do there. So it did not complete the final uh, is one of the questions. And it is a question that you will have very similar to this on your exam. And you'll need to do the correct formula in G5. And we're going to do that here in a minute because we're going to do minimum. We looked at what was the maximum grade. Now what's the minimum grade? So equals minimum, M-I-N, min. And this exam one, enter. So 52 equals minimum, min. Exam two, just to fill it in, so equals min. Exam three, Enter equals min on final exam. And notice it's not going to bring back the blanks. It's only going to bring back the number. Okay. Now I could have put a zero in for them. And let me show you. I'll put I can put a zero in here. So that would be their score. Okay. And this came back as zero. Okay. But in this case, we want to leave this blank and I'll share with you why. Okay. We don't want to fill that data in right now. 
because you will have something like this on your certification exam. And now we're doing the minimum of final grade, min of our final grade. Okay, so you can see how quickly we can fill out um, this, this table, this structured range here, um, if we've already set up our data. Now, the reason why I don't have zeros in there is on your exam, uh, you will have a question that says, in cell something like G5, insert a function that will calculate the number of students who did not complete the final. Okay, and they want you to use the formula that I'm going to share with you right now. So you have to make sure you can understand and do this formula because it won't work if these are zeros. So I'll put zero in here and zero in here because the formula they want you to use and they want you to use a named range. So equal and it's going to be count blank. So basically, it's how many cells don't have data. And they want you to use a name range because it's asking for the range. And we name that range final exam. But it's going to bring me back a zero, which is not the correct answer. Okay. So let me go in and change these zeros to blank because I just have no data in it. Delete. So these are cells with no data. Delete. So we have two students who didn't complete the exam. So instead of giving them zeros at the moment, which their final grade did count it as a zero, okay, there, it's now we go back up and we can see that did not complete the final was two. Now let me do that again now that the blanks are, are still in there. So it's equal count blank, count blank, and our range is final exam. These were people, students who didn't take the final and enter and we have our two. All right, very simple, very quick and easy. There, we filled out this class summary um, table very quickly. We have 38 students. We see what the average is, the minimum and the maximum is, and uh, we can then look at our data. Those of you that are just practicing for your MOS 200 uh, certification exam, thank you for joining us. Those of you that are in Management 1400, please save the file adding your last name, first name, and then uploading it to the appropriate assignments page. Thank you very much.